As someone who played the first three Crash Bandicoot games over and over again, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy delivers exactly what I wanted. The platforming, for better and worse, retains the demanding and occasionally punishing challenge of the originals, while coating it with a fantastic visual and audio polish that makes returning to the experience feel fresh. Vicarious Visions has done an impeccable job of retaining the tough but rewarding platforming of Naughty Dog's original trilogy, while giving every level the sheen of a playable Saturday morning cartoon. Jungle foliage is more lush, fire and water effects are dazzling, though never distracting enough to make me lose more lives, and everything from futuristic cityscapes to temple ruins glow with a beauty I didn't expect. And Vicarious Visions has smartly made the visual update matter to the gameplay as well, Enemies who may have previously been difficult to read now have better tells that don't rob the experience of its difficulty. The trilogy sounds better than ever too, thanks to an HD update to Crash's soundtrack, which has always been an infectious earworm of drums and marimba. Seriously, I need this soundtrack now. But it's the little touches that really impressed me this time around. The way the patter of Crash's footsteps changes from sand to concrete, or Polar's yelps mixing with the cries of whales bring the wacky, weird, and beautiful levels to life. The original Crash Bandicoot is easily the weakest of the bunch, though. Crash's limited moveset and an over-reliance on waves of enemies rather than intriguing platforming challenges makes for a rougher experience, especially when put side by side with Cortex Strikes Back and Warped. There's still fun to be had with the original entry, and it's easy to see the solid foundation on which the next two games were built. Vicarious does include some needed quality of life tweaks like box counters and time trials. And the hints added to loading screens never feel like a cheat, but instead a simple gesture toward more obscure aspects of the games. But for those jumping into the trilogy for the first time, the original Crash won't leave the best first impression. Having years to reflect on them and returning now to the trilogy in this new form, Cortex Strikes Back, on the whole, stands at the test of time as the best overall package. There's an excellent blend of truly challenging core platforming and extra objectives. Secret levels, death routes, and extra gems all make a return. The second entry offers a smart balance of maddening difficulty, but also makes me feel that overcoming every obstacle will take just one more try, even if it takes just a dozen more. And it's that balance that epitomizes what made these games such great platformers over a decade ago and what has allowed the second and third entries to stand the test of time. The trilogy rounds out with the also fantastic Warped, which doesn't strike quite as great a balance between design and difficulty. Levels like Future Frenzy and Tomb Time are a blast to explore, with more crates to smash and a smarter pace to the obstacles peppered throughout stages. But they're never all that difficult. I ended my run through Warped with dozens more lives than I had when I finished Cortex Strikes Back. The challenge comes mostly when Warped switches things up with more vehicle missions. Coco's aerial levels are boring, but the real struggle comes with Crash's underwater and racing levels. Swimming in Crash is challenging because of how loose he controls underwater, not because of anything in the layout of the levels. And for all my love of Crash Team Racing, its roots in Warped are a chore to play thanks to stiff driving controls. The Insane Trilogy delivers one okay experience and two great ones, and they're all made better by Vicarious Visions enhancing the solid foundation Naughty Dog created years ago. Thankfully, those original maddening yet rewarding challenges have stood the test of time mechanically, and Vicarious Visions has done great justice to them with a gorgeous level of polish and care. Crash is back, and I hope he's sticking around for a bit. And for more from the Insane Trilogy, check out the first 15 minutes of the original Crash Bandicoot in 4K.